All right, we'll go ahead and get started. So tonight we are going to hear from the biology and environmental science department with Dr. Samaranian and Dr. Ray Meyer. And again, my name is Kylie. I work in the admissions office and Maddie Cano is also on the call. Uh, behind the scenes, she works in the admissions office as well. So with that, I will pass it over to our faculty. This is uh, Dr. Ashwati Subramanian. Welcome to Simpson College, even though it's a virtual format. Um, I'd like to start with introducing all our fun members of the department. So let me start with introducing Dr. Jackie Brittingham. She is our resident embryologist. She also teaches developmental biology, human physiology, and general um, biology the first semester along with Dr. Riemeyer. So as soon as you join Simpson College for a biology major the first semester, you would uh, be introduced to both Dr. Jackie Brittingham and Dr. Ryan Riemeyer, who is right here with us. Since I brought up Dr. Riemeyer, I'm gonna talk about him. He's our resident mammologist, which I spelled, which I misspelled uh, on another slide. Um, he is, uh, he teaches introductory biology along with Dr. Jackie Brittingham. Uh, a lot of the environmental sciences courses, which also include uh, mammology. Um, he's also the chair of the biology and environmental sciences department um, starting this year. So you'll see a lot of him around. Um, the next person I'd like you like to introduce you to is Dr. Amy Doling. Um, she's the one with the two Basset hounds over there in that picture. Uh, Dr. Doling is the resident microbiologist. She also teaches immunology. And she and I together teach the introductory biology course for the second semester. So the first year you will be introduced to most of us um, in one course or the other. Um, the next person I'd like to introduce you to is Dr. Clint Meyer. Uh, he's an entomologist, as you can see from that picture. So if you need any bugs killed or frozen or put in, um, you know, put in a showcase, he's the person to contact. Um, and the other person I'd like to introduce you to is Tessa Hartman Miller. So if you're interested in anatomy as a course, she is our resident anatomist. She looks scary. I can I know you that's what you think, but um, she's not. <laughs> and then there's me. Um, I'm Dr. Ashwati Subramanian. I have been here for just two years, two and a half years, and um, I teach genetics and cell biology along with the introductory biology course. So this is a very fun department. I could not have asked for a better set of colleagues to work with. So programs in our biology department, we have a few programs that uh, have majors and minors um, that you should be looking into. One is the biology department. Um, one is the major and minor in biology. So the person you see there, um, Sam Wubaker is looking into the microscope and she's observing zebrafish embryos. Um, we have some fun microscopes um, in the in the building. So as soon as you come to Simpson College, the first thing we make you do is work on a microscope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Only if you want to. Only if you want to. Um, the other major we have uh, in the department is environmental sciences. Um, so a little bit about the environmental science major. It's one of the coolest majors on campus. Dr. Riemeyer would say the same thing. Um, there are a, there are plenty of research experiences both in biology and environmental sciences over here at Simpson, uh, but specifically the environmental science um, program has research experiences in summer that we will talk about soon. Um, another major that I'm really interested in talking about is the neuroscience major. Um, the cool thing about this program is it's interdisciplinary in the sense. Uh, Half of the courses that you take towards your neuroscience major will be from psychology and the other half um, will be from biology. And uh, often we see that one of our most uh, dedicated set of students um, and, and high achieving students are from the neuroscience major. Not always, but many of them are. And they often go into uh, med school. Speaking of med school, we have a couple of pre-professional programs, not a couple, we have quite a few pre-professional programs. Um, um, 
first and foremost medicine, um, dentistry, vet medicine, and physical therapy. We also have a, a really good setup um, with the Allen College of Nursing. And so our nursing program is set up in a three plus one uh, format where you take three years um, of uh, undergrad coursework at Simpson and then you have one year at Allen College. So that seems to be extremely um, lucrative and popular amongst our students. So um, yeah, plenty of opportunities uh, for exploring the various um, topics and subjects within the biology department. Um, I would say, you know, wait till the end of your first year to make any of these decisions because you want to explore the first two semesters of introductory biology course before you make a choice as to what your focus is. And Dr. Rima is gonna talk a lot about lab work and I'll chime in. Sure thing. Well, welcome. Uh, glad to have you here. And I'll talk very briefly here. I started looking for pictures to emphasize what we do here at Simpson, and I went a little wild, and it turned into this super collage, like I was making scrapbooks or something like that. But I can't help it. There's so many awesome things that we get to do as biologists. And because I'm an environmental scientist, uh, it just does skew a lot to outdoor environmental sorts of things. But I threw a tetrahymena right in here um, so that Dr. Subramanian could, uh, could you know, emphasize that we do use those microscopes a lot and are answering really important questions with that. But uh, it's it, at our, you know, at Simpson, we really do try to focus on what are called high impact practices. These are experiences that when college students get them, they tie in tightly with them feeling like they had a successful experience in college and it prepares them well for graduate school, professional school, or right for going into the workforce. And um, surveys in the past of all colleges have emphasized that these sorts of activities really help students out a lot. Um, and it turns out that uh, we offer all these um, all the time. And so uh, it's something that's just a, a key component of what we do at Simpson College. Uh, some, some of the experiences here on this left side here, I've written inquiry-based labs. A lot of our, uh, a lot of what we do in our labs aren't gonna be, it's not a cookbook where you try to follow some sort of recipe and see if you end up with what you're supposed to get at the end. Uh, you're actually gonna be you know, posed with a question and then try to figure out as a scientist how you would answer that. So um, we get our students out um, and here's several uh, parts from just the introductory biology uh, lab this year um, in Biology 110. We were doing behavioral observations of squirrels. We were uh, doing evaluations of habitat effects on uh, earthworm abundance. We were uh, tagging uh, monarch butterflies uh, for their migration down to Mexico. Uh, and then we do the classic things like the uh, hands-on of uh, 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 dissections and, and things like that as well. Uh, other high impact practices besides hands-on experiential sort of uh, labs are that we uh, have a big focus on research at the undergraduate level. Of course, we don't have graduate programs in the sciences at Simpson. Uh, so we're able to put our efforts into getting undergraduates uh, quality experiences so that they uh, are uh, more sophisticated as scientists down the road. Um, and so again, I was just in my iCloud photos and I just was like, oh my gosh, there's so much awesome stuff here. And I tried to cut back uh, but these are just some pictures from the last couple of years. And uh, you'll see, I'm seeing several cases here where we'll, uh, one of the students who's gonna be talking, uh, Molly Fisher, she, uh, she did a lot of these things uh, here and shows up, uh, just emphasizes that our students, you know, uh, they're designing studies, they're carrying them out, they're dealing with when things go wrong, they're problem solving, they're coming back and figuring out uh, what to do next. And then they're ultimately finishing their project, presenting it and adding that body of, you know, that bit of information to uh, the body of science. And so um, that's what our students get to do here. Uh, and, and so that is uh, what, we, uh, what we always try to let all of our students do. You wanna add anything here, Dr. Subramanian? Um, only that we have uh, other lab-based uh, research experiences during fall and spring semester as well. That would be with individual um, lab, uh, with individual um, professors. So depending on your field of interest, whether you're interested in 
cellular research, developmental research, or molecular research. You could be potentially working with one of us during the course of the um, you know, school year instead of um, during summer. And so there are those opportunities as well. So that during summer, you could go elsewhere and gain further experience, as you will see in the next slide. So speaking of experiences outside Simpson College, um, summer is the time to really make the most of off-campus research experiences, specifically in uh, specifically in larger universities, because they have a research setup. That they have graduate students, postdoctoral researchers, etc., who will be willing to help out. Um, with uh, student research experiences. So in the past, we've had students who've gone to much larger universities, such as University of Minnesota, University of Iowa, um, Des Moines University, Florida, Kansas State, Power Poland, et cetera. Plenty of opportunities. This summer itself, we had both biology, uh, environmental science, um, student researchers do research at both Power Poland and um, University of Colorado even though uh, COVID hit, um, it didn't really stop them from gaining online research um, experiences. So uh, we strongly suggest that students start applying for off-campus research experiences during summer, regardless of what you're interested in doing after you graduate. So whether you're interested in going into industry, whether you're interested in joining academia, med school, and, whether you want to become an ecologist, definitely if you want to become an ecologist, these are all opportunities you should uh, pursue. And we will write stellar recommendation letters if um, once we get to know you as students. Um, and so don't, don't miss out on that opportunity. And I just want to uh, talk very briefly about the concept of internships. Uh, here at Simpson, we call them explorerships just because they um, are really... Uh, uh, rigorously structured. Uh, we have an amazing uh, office that, that basically is the, um, you know, the central place where we go to find internships and it allows us to uh, be able to uh, make sure that students are meeting, you know, learning outcomes, specific learning outcomes during their studies and they just get the most from these activities. And, you know, we find that internships or explorerships are a great way to figure out if something is what you want to do for your life or if it's definitely not, that's a great thing to figure out as well. But you can see from the list of places from the last couple of years so on the left, um, we have a lot of places in the, in the region where uh, students have gone to uh, be involved in uh, sometimes summer internships, sometimes during the semesters. And we also have May term here, which allows students to do a, a three week uh, class uh, where you're just taking a single class. And that's a great place to start an internship as well. So. Uh, as Dr. Subramani was saying just a second ago, I mean, the research experiences and, and explorerships are what you should be trying to do and make the most of these experiences to differentiate yourself from, uh, from all the other students. We're going to be graduating with a degree in biology or environmental science, uh, but we, we try to get our students many opportunities to uh, be able to um, demonstrate uh, that they have gone above and beyond what's expected for just the, the major. I want to talk a little bit about this, though. Yeah. Our students get involved in a lot of different um, things outside of the classroom, and I think that's, again, part of the high-impact practices that we have here, but these are student-led uh, efforts, and so that's what's so great about it is students start taking, you know, ownership of their educational experience and realizing there's more than just what goes on in the classroom. Um, and so our, our students often create organizations or they contribute to organizations uh, that are in line with what's important to them. So they really make Simpson their home and they do what's important to them. Some ones that I'll mention because they're near and dear to my heart because I've uh, been involved with them uh, include Sustainability Club. Um, and this is a very active set of students who uh, are of all different majors around campus. But the goal is, of course, to raise awareness about the environment and uh, for all of campus and do things that will make people um, consider how they're uh, making an impact on the planet. So they've, you know, in recent years, uh, they'll have uh, movie nights where we get to, uh, you know, discuss um, recent documentaries. Uh, there has in the past been an organic garden on campus that was important to students. Um, uh, the Sustainability Club worked to, with SGA to get funding to uh, fund a bike share program as well. 
Um, so just lots of different things that students do that make the world a better place through uh, that outside of their you know, time that they have to do classes and things like that. Uh, but it's important to them. So that's what they do. Uh, other things that are on here, we have students who will clean up the environment just because they're, they're like that. Um, and that. That club doesn't have a name yet, yet but you know, they're, they're still working on it. It has to do with trash, but we can't think of a good, not trashy name for it. Um, and, there, and there's this group of students here, including, again, I'm seeing Molly Fisher uh, here hidden in the back. Um, and she had just burned down an entire prairie, which is a good thing because you need fire uh, for prairie. And so we have um, some private land that we um, that we're able to maintain and students get experience doing things like uh, burns. We also have near campus a, a, a um, student groups who wanted to uh, create a uh, restored prairie on uh, near campus. Uh, Dr. Subramani, do you want to talk a little bit about like Health Society or Tri Beta or anything? Sure. Cool. Um, I'll start with the Tri Beta program um, and then move on to Pre Health Society because I think there's a lot more to talk about the Pre Health Society right now. So the Tri Beta program is is a, it's an elitist club. I'm kidding. Well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a club uh, which is uh, meant for honor students so if you get a particular gpa and above you have the honor of joining the tri beta program um it, the past year we haven't done too much with the tri beta program or simply because of um covid hitting and you know things um changing pace uh, but soon we're going to pick up a lot of initiatives um, and so when you join Simpson College, there will be a lot more momentum um, starting next year with respect to the Honor Society. Uh, but similar to the Sustainability and Pre-Health Society, the tri -Beta Society is run, uh, even though we have uh, professors who are chairs of the society, it's the students that run the program. So it really depends on what your interests are in biology and what you want to explore. For example, um, bringing in people to give talks, perhaps, or doing some sort of service to uh, for healthcare, etc. Um, speaking of healthcare, we have the Pre-Health Society, which seems to be very popular um, at, at our uh, department. And so, Pre-Health can cover anything from students interested in joining medical school to PA school to um, vet school and also physical therapy, et cetera. So anything health related falls under this category. It's run solely by students. Like I mentioned before, your professors will hang out during the meetings, um, but really the decision of calling people to give talks um, or having webinars, um, which is very popular this semester, or having, or as you can see in that picture there, it's a group of students who have gone to the What's it called? Ronald McDonald House? Yep, Ronald exactly. McDonald House uh, during campus day, which is a day of um, service to the community. And um, you also make uh, extremely good, uh, good relationships with um, your peers and your um, seniors, where we pair up students as a mentor mentee kind of a setup where you have um, not just stress relief, but also a lot of input from your senior students in your pre-health society. So definitely lots of options to explore um, at Simpson. And you know what, you could even make your own club if you can come think of a very different topic that um, has not been explored before. Um, and you should ask Jorge more about those opportunities. We, he'll talk a lot about um, that soon. Uh, and I will speak very briefly about May term uh, and international travel that we can do with our biology classes, even though it's the thing that I perhaps like the most about being a biologist at Simpson College is the opportunity to uh, take students to places around the globe that, you know, um, demonstrate the things we talk about in class. And so uh, this is a very this is very uh, tropic centric as I look at it, but uh, we do go to lots of lots of places. Um, you see a list down below of places we've gone since I've been here. And uh, it's not just uh, necessarily like environmental science types of, of classes or marine biology, which a lot of them are, but we also have courses in the department that are about world health and about um, uh, things like that. So this, uh, these like Cambodia and Namibia, these have been um, uh, courses 
where uh, the, the focus was on uh, was on health in those in those countries. So uh, there's lots of different opportunities for for students, but uh, mostly it's our opportunity to get out there um, and and do research and um, maybe see if the ocean is mad at us or not. Maybe Molly could speak to that um, in greater detail. But uh, it's just a chance to over a three week period really immerse ourselves in in the work that scientists do out in out in nature. So that's an opportunity here at Simpson that uh, was probably the thing that attracted me to decide that this is where I wanted to work and I haven't looked back in the 16 years since I came here. So um, we're now on to the best part of the uh, presentation and that is just to maybe give a chance for a couple uh, students. Uh, one who is a recent graduate, uh, Molly Fisher, I'll let her talk about what she's up to and, and sort of her perspective on Simpson. And then after Molly, Jorge, a current student, uh, will, will speak a little bit about his perspective. Uh, these two students are, I'd like to say we just randomly grabbed a couple students, uh, but these are exemplar students, obviously, uh, but everyone has an opportunity to do the sorts of things that these two students uh, do. So I'll just hand it over to, to Molly and let her uh, talk a little bit um, about her experience. That's a lot of power, Remeyer. I don't know if I can handle it. Um, <laughs> so my name is Molly Fisher. I grew up in Nashua, Iowa, um, very small town in Northeast Iowa. You've probably never heard of it. I majored in environmental science and I was involved in a lot of very random things on campus. Um, and I, I guess I can list them all, um, including Sustainability Club. I was the vice president of that. I was a part of the Omicron Delta Kappa Honor Society, the Beta 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 Honor Society, the Phi Alpha Theta Honor Society, and then I was president of the Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. I was the Campus Activities Board Traditions Director. I was a Campus Activities Board President. I was a senator on our Student Government Association before becoming a senior class president. And then I was also a Carver Bridge a STEM to Success Scholar, which we got to do a whole bunch of really cool independent research. Um, I really enjoyed and loved my time at Simpson. Um, the highlight, I guess, would be going to Little Cayman Island, even though something in the ocean stung me and I almost died. Um, and almost. I got to go there. He almost died, all right? Almost. We, we brought almost all of our students back. I just want to point that out. Continue <laughs> on. Sorry, Molly. <laughs> the professors take really good care um, of you when you are in a foreign place and also when you're on campus uh, they really care about you that's a highlight of Simpson um, and on Little Cayman I got to research coral for the first time which is actually what I'm doing right now um, believe it or not I'm attending Kansas State University um, as a master's student and my research focuses on coral nitrogen cycling and genomics um, poof maybe your brain went um, our research is going to be lab-based and field-based. Uh, we are trying to go to Taiwan, but with COVID, that's not happening at the moment, but those are in the future plans. Um, after graduate school, um, I could get my PhD. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I would like to be a field ecologist, preferably studying coral reefs before they're all annihilated by global climate change, which Remeyer can tell you all about um, and make you super excited. Um, I really like Simpson. Um, it was a great place. I learned a lot. Um, I kind of found it by accident. I uh, was not intending to go to Simpson College until I received a pretty, pretty good scholarship package and I just got very lucky. So that you're here and listening to this is a step above what I was doing as a senior in high school. So I commend you for that. Um, if I were in your shoes and I would do it again, I would meet professors ahead of time um, or virtually and talk about what you're interested in, um, be excited about what you potentially could learn um, and also have an open mind. Uh, it might not be the right professor you're talking to. Um, maybe you're talking about viruses and you're not exactly interested in viruses. Um, just keep an open mind. There's something cool to learn in every single field. Um, and also, there are so many opportunities to have at Simpson. Um, like I said before, you have professors that actually care and want you to succeed, which you can't find anywhere, just at any random college. Um, you have awesome classes that are really fun and hands-on, as was mentioned before. One of my favorites was mammalogy, um, but the other favorite was freshwater ecology, which was not with Remeyer, but with Meyer. 
um, you have study abroad opportunities, which may lead you to find um, a subject you're really passionate about and you want to study for the rest of your life, even if you're from Iowa and have never been to a true ocean before. Um, and also there are scholarships for those study abroad experiences, so everybody can experience them. You have a lot of independent research during the semester that you can do, um, but also during the summer, um, which is a lot of fun. And you have the opportunity to do uh, the SCUR program, which is a Simpson College Ecological Research, which is where I got my first little experience in true science um, and ecology. And uh, because of that, I'm where I'm here. <laughs> So you blame me for this, Molly? Is that what you're saying? You you blame me for turning you to the dark side? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Remire right. and Meyer are to blame for turning I'll take me it. to the dark side. <laughs> so hello, uh, my name is Corey Castellan. I am a current junior, so I graduated in 2022. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm from Mason City, Iowa, which is like two hours and 30 minutes north of Indianola, decently sized town. Uh, my current majors are biology and economics which is a little different than a lot of other students because they're not very much so related. Um, on campus, I'm currently involved in student government where I'm the vice president of the student body. I am involved in Greek life. I am involved in Tri Beta, um, ODK, and multiple other involvements, but much minor roles. Um, let's see. So currently, um, I'm a pre-med major, full biology. I plan to go into medical school. And so a thing I could say, if you're considering uh, doing pre-med at Simpson, it, the opportunities are endless. I, I came in here with the idea of going to go to Simpson for a year because like, I don't know what college was like. My parents have never been to college. Just kind of come in here. And if I don't like it, transfer. I ended up loving it. So I'm going to stay here the four years, obviously. And like, just the things that you can do from research ranging, um, like programs here at Simpson, but to like the Des Moines areas. Um, I know a big thing when looking into students that are pre-med is like clinical hours and where you can get those, what you can do. And being close to Des Moines is really a big point. They kind of set it apart. Like I currently work as a scribe at the emergency department in Des Moines. And I know for a fact that most of my coworkers are Iowa State students because at some state schools, some bigger institutions, they don't have the opportunity to work within the, their hospitals. It's a little more competitive, a little more, um, if you may, exclusive. So like many of those people have to come all the way to Des Moines to get that type of clinical hours, which is um, really needed. Um, so yeah, um, the picture of me right there is in Costa Rica. I was also, I had the pleasure of going to Costa Rica my first year um, for a May term which I liked it a lot. It was about education and healthcare. So like, once again, I was able to go to uh, Central America, experience different things, something I didn't think I was ever gonna do, especially as a first year, because you're like, oh, it's my first year, you know, I'll wait. But if choosing Simpson, I would encourage all you guys to get involved and try different things because you never know. Um, economics really wasn't on my radar until I took an intro level course and now I'm a major. and I haven't done research for the biology department, but I have done uh, two semesters of research for economics. So like, um, you never know what's gonna happen. Maybe you'll end up changing halfway. Maybe you'll find something that you like more and like um, the opportunities are very good. Um, I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed Simpson a lot too because of the close relationship to professors. Um, it feels like you can come to them to anything for help, for advice and like, some places, I don't know if, if this is what it's like, but um, for me, not knowing what college was like was really helpful. Um, I was able to meet with Dr. Birmingham and Dr. Ditzler before uh, committing to Simpson. And I found that very helpful because it kind of told me what to do, kind of how to do it, what my plans were, because I thought that I could go to medical school after graduating in three years, which is very unrealistic because yeah, you may have a lot of credits. Yeah, you may think you're very smart, but at the end of the day, you've got to, take a step back and like, if you're really close to someone that they're willing to tell you like the reels and how to be as successful as you possibly can be and do it effectively. Um, Simpson, Simpson's very good. I, I, would, I wouldn't trade for anything else. And like I said, opportunities are endless.
Thank you, Jorge, for sharing your experience. Same to you, Molly. Appreciate that. Um, and I know that if I were uh, at home watching this as a prospective student that um, old people like me talking, that's great. Um, I, I have a long-term perspective here, but I'd want to know, you know, sort of what the more recent experience is for our students. So appreciate you taking the time to, to speak uh, at, at this. Um, all right, so just very briefly, two other things I want to mention just because, I mean, we are training you to be prepared for, uh, for getting a job and, and that sort of thing. Um, and so I want to make sure that we uh, have the opportunity to uh, tell you basically what you get when you, you know, when you come to Simpson. One of the main things you're going to look at is you are going to have faculty advisors who are knowledgeable about what's going on in our discipline. So we can try to make sure that we can align your interests with what the world needs and what the workforce is demanding. So, you know, if you're my advisee uh, and you're not sure what you want to do, we're going to look at Bureau of Labor Statistics um, sort of uh, information and figure out what aligns with what you're interested in and where there's growth and uh, where there's a good chance for a long-term career uh, that will be lucrative. Um, also, we work with our students, as uh, has been mentioned, you know, uh, things like letters of recommendation. Those are really important for getting into graduate school or getting an interview or getting into medical school. And we get to know our students right from the very start of their time here at Simpson, uh, because we have small classes, we have labs where the professors are in the labs with you. We have research experiences, all these things that allow us to speak to your growth as a scientist from when you arrive on campus at age 17 or 18, and when you're ready to graduate um, four years later, uh, that, that we've been, I mean, that's valuable uh, down the road. Um, and then other things that we can do, we have amazing uh, alumni. And so we have this health professions alumni mentoring network, especially for students who are interested in healthcare, uh, where we've got people who ha are recently through the process of med school and, and through residency and you know, 10 years down the road, uh, we have people at different levels of uh, their career that can provide uh, great uh, advice to folks uh, who are still trying to explore what they should be doing. So um, you're going to get as much advice as you're willing to come and take and, and communicate with us. Very last thing uh, I promise is uh, just a quick reminder uh, that our students are very successful when they <clears throat> uh, leave Simpson. You know, we know from our uh, career development office uh, sort of what students are doing when they leave here and all colleges are required to report this information about how successful their students are. And, Thankfully, our students, you know, well, we, we graduate about 30 to 40 or so biology and environmental science majors annually. Uh, we know that uh, a significant majority of them, you know, in the 90s, 90 uh, percentile um, are working in their field um, immediately after uh, after graduation um, or uh, or moving on to graduate school and continuing their education. Uh, we also know that our students who do apply to medical school are relatively successful. Um, um, and I'm, I'm trying to understate it with relatively because we're very, we're very uh, honest about the way that we support our students and we'll support all of our students uh, when we're writing letters of recommendation for folks. Uh, there are some of our competitors who do this a little differently and they ensure really high acceptance rates because they only write letters for a couple students each year. And I don't think that's fair. And I've seen lots of students who uh, may not be broadly, may not be viewed by some to be competitive, but they've ultimately matriculated to medical school or graduate school. And so um, I think our students um, are, are highly competitive. And so you can see a list of from the last couple of years, some medical schools where our students have, uh, have gone. All right. I'd like um, to add I, something else here. Oh um, yes, of course. We, uh, we talk about accessibility to the professors and the fact that your professors really get to know you. But one way that you allow that to happen is to for you to actually come to our offices and talk to us because we may have you in our class but we don't know too much about you just by your grades right we want to get to know you as people we want to get to know what your soft skills are and soft skills is a term that is just thrown around regardless of what employment you're seeking it's it's it has not it has something more than just your talents it has a lot to do with your personality how you handle stress so on and so forth so make the most of having this access to your professors you you want them to know you as a 
well, you need to know that we are human beings and you also want um, them to know you as um, a person whom we can talk about and write pages and pages of, um, you know, recommendations. Yeah, we, we just want committees to say, I'm tired of reading good things about this student. Just accept yeah. them. Yes. And, and let's be done with this. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, as Dr. Subramanian said, I mean, the real key here, it's a give and take and, and our doors are open for you. Um, and the students that we talked about already, there are many more, but the students that we've highlighted tonight are the ones who make the most of, you know, what's available at Simpson, for sure. Uh, just the last thing here uh, is just uh, something that I had seen other presentations sort of end on a why, you know, why come to Simpson? And I know that, you know, uh, from my own perspective, why I chose Simpson as a place to work was because I visited here and I learned that the students um, were very interested in learning. I learned that I had uh, the potential to have faculty colleagues who truly cared about the success of our students. We're not here for the big money because that's not what's in higher ed um, and certainly not at small liberal arts colleges. Uh, we're here because we do I mean, we love to see our students be successful. And, um, <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, if you choose to come to Simpson, you're gonna get attention from, from the faculty. You're gonna get the opportunity to do research. You're gonna get lots of chances because of our location to be able to engage with bio agriculture, you know, technology companies um, and, and all kinds of explore ships in, in the nearby area. Um, so uh, I think there's, many reasons why why you'd want to choose Simpson uh, but again uh, we're always available for additional consultation and and meetings via zoom or uh, on campus uh, if you ever need to talk with us Jessica asked what is the difference between bio a biology degree and one in a pre-health profession so the difference is only with respect to the track that you'd like to follow um, when you when we say pre health profession, you're not going to get a specific degree that says that you are pre vet or pre med. You're just going to prioritize the kind of courses that you're going to take um, towards uh, your your profession of interest. The only difference there is in terms of pre nursing, where we have a three plus one track. So if you have a three plus one track, then you would either they'll get a degree in biology or, or perhaps a degree in neuroscience, but you'll have to finish all your coursework within three years. Say you're doing pre-med or pre-vet um, or pre-PT, um, what you would be doing is you would structure your coursework in a way, so we have to, you, ha you may have to write, you will have to write your MCAT for, um, for if you're interested in med school, and therefore there are certain course requirements that you want to fulfill, not just for your biology or neuroscience degree or whatever degree you're trying to fulfill, but also for your um, MCAT before you take your MCAT exams. So there are a, there are a few um, differences with respect to um, what, what focus you have with respect to your courses. There, so one thing that's sometimes confusing to students is, you know, they'll tell their family, I'm gonna be pre-med but there's no school that offers pre-med as a major. It's not truly a major. You'd, you'd need to pick a biology or chemistry or biochemistry, uh, but that pre-med then designates that there's a certain set of courses you're gonna want to take. Your advisor would work with you and say, hey, here are the things that are covered on the MCAT that Dr. S talked about. Um, you need to have you know, these six courses done before you would apply. Uh, medical schools, uh, don't, you don't have to be a biology major to go to medical school, yeah. but you do need to have the coursework taken so that you're competitive on the MCAT. Um, and, and there are some basic prerequisite courses for medical school, but you don't have to be a specific major to do that. Um, so it really comes down to that, that pre-professional part is the advising you would get from, from a faculty member to make sure that you're prepared for that first, you know, for whatever your next standardized test is. Um, also, so to follow up, so the, the pre-nursing program, you end up getting two degrees out of that. So you would get the three years here at Simpson, uh, you would earn the, that's accelerated, um, and you would earn your Bachelor of Arts here at Simpson, and then plus the one, a little bit more than one year at Allen College of Nursing, you then have your BSN as well. So you'd get both those because the nursing school can't provide the, uh, the uh, core courses that we can in, in the sciences. And as a 
undergraduate institution, we can't offer the clinical experiences that a nursing school can. And so that's when we put those two together, then a student in a period of just over four years can have both those degrees and be ready for um, you know, a, a career with some leadership in, in nursing. Does the Department of Biology have honors programs? Oh. So a oh. uh, great question. Uh, <laughs> we do have an honors program um, at Simpson and I'm actually on the honors council. Um, there are two types of honors programs um, in this country. One is you'll find universities where you have a more complex version of specific classes, which is what they consider as honors program. So what we consider as an honors program is an interdisciplinary program. So you take additional courses um, specifically in topics that are interdisciplinary in nature. So for example, this semester I'm teaching an honors course, which is biology, design and architecture and how we can combine biological form and function towards sustainability. So even though it seems like two different topics, there's actually a lot of um, intermingling of those and that is what we consider truly interdisciplinary. And that's one of the strengths of a liberal arts uh, program. So when say you're applying to med schools or any other health profession, um, they don't want to just see you see that you have done biology courses. Uh, as interesting as it is for us, they sometimes view that as being a bit too boring because everyone applying to med school will have great MCAT scores, um, top-notch scores in biology, so on and so forth. So you want to make yourself stand out. And one of the ways you can stand out is by joining the honors program if you have the, pre uh, if you have the required GPA. Um, I, you will not regret it. It's a lot of fun. I may be partial to it because I like uh, liberal arts education, um, but it's not departmental based. Anyone from any department can teach the honors course and you can take honors courses and other subjects as well, which actually kind of looks really good on your CV as a pre-med. Adding to that, um, your goal, at least in undergrad, when trying to go to pre-med is to stand out, is to be different because if, if you got a high GPA and the same MCAT score, they're gonna look at other factors. What are you involved? What do you do? What, what, what's different? What can you bring? And like you said, if you're interested in something like criminal justice, um, that's like, there's a whole legal aspect to uh, medicine when you become a doctor. So that makes you even that much more competitive. So being able to tailor two different programs um, is, is very, very unique of Simpson as well. So like, that's why I decided to do economics because I'm also interested in the financial aspect of how a hospital works. And like, I think that might be an advantage of me moving forward because I can say that I have a different background as well in addition to hopefully a decent MCAT score but we'll see. So that was just an additional thing that I thought I'd add in. Uh, that's a good point, Jorge. In fact, the honors program is relatively new here. Otherwise, uh, you would have perhaps been recruited um, actively even before you joined, but um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just been a couple of years since the program is really active. And I think you have um, the required GPA is anywhere. I'm not sure whether it's 3.5. I think it's 3.3 to 3.5, but once some of your information, if you apply or if you um, if you apply to Simpson and uh, there's some information already provided, the honors program themselves will contact you. Uh, if they don't, you can contact admissions. Are there any specific admissions requirements for the undergraduate biology program? I'm, do you want me Let to make sure? Yeah, I want to make sure I was on, on off mute. No, there's there's no uh, specific uh, prerequisites. You know, uh, you don't have to have had much in the way of science courses before beginning uh, sciences at Simpson or or most undergraduate settings. We uh, structure our introductory courses in a way that we're going to get you running uh, and up to speed on things. But then again, we have students who've taken AP uh, courses uh, in those fields. And yet most of the time they do take the introductory courses because uh, AP in high school is just this high speed, let's get through this book as fast as possible. And, and a lot of students are like, I don't know what just happened. And, and, uh, and you know, high school teachers are doing the best they can just to keep everyone in one room. And, and so um, you do not have to have, and there's no prereqs for entering the biology program. Uh, but once you're here, you're gonna be challenged and that's great. That challenge is what, um, is what makes you uh, the best possible scientist you can be when you leave here. 
And you also don't join as a biology major, you join undeclared and towards the end of your first year, you declare a major. So say during the course of that one year, you decide, well, I actually like chemistry or biochemistry. I don't know why you would choose that. Once yeah. you meet us, you'd be biologists forever, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but you, you make that decision the middle of your second semester or towards the end of your first year. All right. Well, with that, again, feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions. Um, great questions tonight. And thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Appreciate the faculty's time, Molly and Jorge for joining us as well. Um, really appreciate you all taking the time to be here tonight and give all this information. Make sure you follow us on social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, we have a YouTube channel where there are additional videos like this talking about student life on campus and other academic programs. So uh, definitely check those out. Otherwise, uh, we hope you have a great rest of your night. Thank you for joining us.